Right. Hey, it's been a minute since I put anything out there, and that's various reasons. One, I moved into a new hangar, and really, to be honest with you, I don't even think about picking up a camera and recording anything. I'm just too busy, too far behind, really, to stop and and go through it. It's a lot of work to put a video together, but anyways, I did want to talk to you about you know some gear issues with the Piper Arrow. That seems to be pretty common. Uh, this is a plane that came in. It's been an ongoing issue where you get an in-transit light uh, for his gear uh, after a couple minutes of flying. Thought we had the problem fixed. We replaced all the uh, O-rings and the actuators, and they end up, you know, helping it for a while. But then the problem came back. So, and after doing some research, this is a pretty common issue with a lot of you Piper Arrow guys. And I want to go through what my trouble with shooting steps war and how we finally uh, resolve the issue. Um, but um, basically, if you get in transit light, you know, in flight, typically what's going on is you're losing pressure somewhere in your system. Somewhere there's a leak. And if you don't see any red hydraulic fluid on the ground, you know, your reservoir's not losing anything, the leak is internal. Um, if it's external, well, that's easy enough to fix. I mean, follow, follow the red trail. But this one was an internal leak. And like I said earlier, I had replaced all the uh, O-rings and all the actuators. Um, for those of you that have gone through this already, you know these O-ring packing, the O-ring kits are not cheap for, especially the main gears on the arrows. Um, but then we started looking at, okay, so having the issue, so you got the uh, the dump valve, and then after that you got the um, hydraulic pump itself. And I'll shoot you a picture of the uh, the dump valve where it's at, and the O-rings that are associated with it, and then ultimately what ended up being on this plane, which is pretty common, is the hydraulic pump, and yeah, in particular the gear up gear up check valve. Um, it was bypassing fluid there. Anyways, I'll stop the camera and uh, shoot some pictures of what I found. Here's the dump valve and you got two lines come through it. The valve is actually inside of here. You had to pull this whole assembly off to get to it. But this is a common place where fluid can bypass and you basically got two MS28775-006 O-rings in there that over time can get hard and then start you know, bypassing fluid. Uh, pulled that valve apart, replaced the O-rings, uh, resealed it. That didn't solve the issue. So my next step, if you can see here, is you got your up and down manifold. And basically what I did is isolate each gear is, you know, start pulling these lines and capping it. And what that does is that isolate one gear at a time. And I retract the gear. It would still, uh, the other two gear that did come up, it would uh, still sag. About every three to four seconds, you'd hear the pump cycle and the gear come back up. But it was drooping the gear. Um, this isn't, can be an issue. This ended up not being our issue, but this is your uh, pressure switch that shuts it off, uh, shuts your pump off. But basically, this is sensing pressure. And when you hit, I believe on this model, it's about 1,700 PSI, 1,800 PSI. I'm sure some of your keyboard Nazis will correct me on this. But anyways, if this shuts off too early, it doesn't build up enough pressure, then keep the pump cycling, try to pump the gear up. This wasn't the case. The pump was putting out plenty of pressure. The gear was coming up, then it would cycle off, and then 
like I said, three to four seconds later, it's gear starts sagging. And in the course of about five minutes, you know, if I didn't do anything, um, turn the master switch off, the gear would come completely down in about five minutes. All right, here's the pump itself. And one thing to look for is down here, there's a manifold. It's very difficult to kind of put this camera really where you need to see it, but there's a manifold down there. And there's four O-rings between the manifold and the reservoir of the pump. And that is also a typical place it can leak, but there was no evidence of leaking in there. Next thing you got, there's a check valve. Ah, it's next to impossible to see this installed. But there's a check valve that's back here in this corner. And you got a gear up check valve, and then you got a shuttle valve in there. And that's what ended up being the problem with this pump. Here's your check valve. This is the gear up check valve. And what happens, you got a, a ball that seats on the inside and a spring loaded shut. Well, if it gets unseated, pressure is allowed to bleed through uh, right here, bleed through past the valve, and basically start drooping your gear. There's another shuttle valve that sits more inboard inside the uh, pump. Uh, there's an O-ring inside there as well, and end up replacing that O-ring, you know, just for good measure. The O-ring seemed fine, but I was already there, so I replaced the O-ring. Um, but this check valve ended up being the problem. I put a new, a little bit beefier design, uh, a little more robust uh, design, and that ended up solving the issue. The new pump, last I checked, to get one, none, I say new. It's not the right word at all, but it's a used overhaul pump looking about $5,000 with the core exchange. Here, get a new check valve. Now, it's pretty pricey for what you're looking at. You're talking about between four and $500 for a new check valve and about a day's worth of labor in and out. But even at my shop rate, a day's worth of labor and the check valve can replace many pumps many times over. But that's it in a nutshell. That's what ended up being the problem with this. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of steps to go through when troubleshooting uh, this in transit light that will come on and go out. Uh, first look at the uh, actuators. And after the actuators, after you look at the actuators, uh, go through the steps I just took. Um, you can check the, uh, uh, the dump valve. And then you go and start checking individually each gear at a time. Make sure that maybe you don't have still an actuator still bypassing internally. And then the last step is the check valve I just talked about. Anyways, hope that helps you out.